Hey everyone, what's up? Matt here from SoundSwitch. In this tutorial video, we're going to be showing you everything about auto scripting. So let's get into it. So in this video, we're going to cover off the auto scripting feature. We'll explain what it is and how it works. And then we'll take you through edit mode and show you how you can use the settings and configuration in SoundSwitch to make the most out of the auto scripting feature. We'll also switch over to performance mode and get one of our auto scripted tracks playing back here on the Prime 4. So what is auto scripting and how does it work? The auto scripting feature is used to automatically create light shows for songs in your DJ set. It will analyze the particular song, break it into phrasing and sections, and then will sync lighting effects specific to each section. For example, SoundSwitch will analyze the track, find out where the intro is, and will place lighting effects for the intro at the start of the track. It can also find the chorus or main one section, and will add lighting effects on the drop, the build-up, the breakdown, and the bridge. The first thing we need to do is make sure that our lights are all set up properly. We've covered this off in the Back to Basics video and the Getting Started video, which is linked in the description below but we'll take you through how to set up your lights to work really well with the auto scripting feature. So the first thing that we want to do is jump over into edit mode and start to patch in all of our lights. So we'll open sound switch and select edit mode. Now we won't be using the gig bar move venue that's already set up. We'll be starting from scratch. The first thing that we need to do is set up our lights into groups. We want to group the two sets of lights that we have on either side of the DJ booth into individual groups and make sure that the gig bar move is grouped in the middle. So the first thing that we will do is insert a fixture group. So we will insert a fixture group and then we will open up our fixture library and I'll look for the Mark H7 par in six channel mode. I'll drop two of these into the first group then I will look for the Chauvet gig bar move. And I'll use the simple mapping, which I can place in the middle of my venue. And because the gig bar is a group of fixtures all in one, sound switch will automatically add a group for me, which is perfect. I'll also go back and look for the Mark H7 so that I can add my right hand group. And if I hold shift and drag these in, I can add two and I can add it to a group. I won't worry about the DMX address right now. I'll just add my groups. So here I have my marks in group one. I have my gig bar in the center and I have another set of fixtures on the right hand side here. I'll double click on my group and I'll rename this stage left pars and I'll name this one Stage Right Pars. I'll also name this to be the Top Light, Left. And I'll name this one to be Bottom Light, Left. And the same thing on the other side, Top Light, Right, and bottom, light, right. Perfect. This helps me to identify what lights are which and which ones are in the group. Now I can go over to my DMX tab, which I can see here is yellow because I have some fixtures that are cross patched and I'll just set these to be on the right address. So I'll set this one to DMX 470 the next one to DMX 480, this one to DMX 490, and this one to DMX 500. And I'll set my gig bar move to address one. I'll then go over to the MIDI window and I'll turn on a blue override. And as you can see, all of my lights are all blue. This lets me know that I'm in control and I've patched my lights in correctly. What lights you're using will be different to this, and you will name them differently depending on how you want to set them up. 
It's totally up to you. You can name your groups anything from stage left, stage right, or your lights to top to bottom to middle or even one, two, three or four. It really depends on how your lights are all set up. Now that I know my fixtures are all connected, I'm going to switch over to the DMX map and I'm going to explain the fixture categories. Now, fixture categories are used by the automation to apply different effects based on the category. For example, if I set my top wash lights on the outside to be a wash primary and the bottom lights to be wash secondary, I'm going to get different effects on either of those lights. So I'll do exactly that. I'll set the bottom on the left to be wash secondary and the same thing with the right hand side to be wash secondary. I'll leave the gig bar move as a mover primary and I'll leave my top lights as the wash primaries. Now, this is a really cool way to add different effects into your lighting. So if you wanna play around, just simply change the fixture category at any point and see what the automation results are. So perfect. I've set up my lights and I've set my fixture categories. Now I will select done and I'm going to open my engine prime library. And here I'm going to script some tracks that have already been stored on my USB stick. I will select my house tracks and then I will open one of my songs. I'll open this first one. Now to access the auto scripting feature, we simply select the auto button. And here we get presented with a simple menu. We can choose any of the presets or styles that come shipped with SoundSwitch. So let me open the dynamic preset. I'll then press auto and SoundSwitch will analyze the audio file and will build a light show. You can also batch AutoScript an entire crate or collection. Here you can right click on a crate or collection and press AutoScript. This will then AutoScript all of the tracks in that collection. If you want to AutoScript some, but not all of the tracks in your crate, simply use Command Selection or Shift Selection, right click and AutoScript those selected tracks. And SoundSwitch will only AutoScript those particular tracks. Perfect, SoundSwitch has analyzed my audio and has created a light show for me. If I open up my groups, I can see that there are also a number of effects placed on each fixture track. This track here is for my top light on the left and for my bottom light on the left. As you can see, these two lights now have different effects placed on them. This is because they have been categorized differently. If I switch over to the DMX map, you can see here that wash primary and wash secondary are selected. That means that I'm getting primary effects on this light and secondary effects on this light. The same thing for the other fixtures in my group. For example, my gig bar move, as well as the lights on the right hand side of my setup. Perfect. If I press play on this now, I probably won't get any effects coming out of my movers. This is because we need to set up the position cues and we also need to set up the attribute cues so that we have some gobo changes. As you can see, there's a number of flags in the main track as well as position cues being placed in the movement track. The attribute cues here on the left correspond with the flags in the main track and the positions correspond with the position cues in the main track. All I need to do is double click to open up a position queue, select my movers and point them in the direction that I want them to shine. I'll go through and do this for all of my different movers and my position queues. I can choose to select one mover at a time or I can select to choose both and move them at the same time. Once you've applied all your pan and tilt settings inside the positions, the position cues in the main track will automatically update. It's the same thing for attribute cues, except in this example, attribute cues are used to control gobos, prism, zoom, and other effects that are built into the light. I can turn on my derby rotations and the laser on my gig bar, as well as the gobos and other settings of the light. And I can go through and apply these changes to all of my cues as well. 
If you would like to rename an attribute queue, simply right click and you can rename the queue and you can duplicate it, which will include all of the settings inside the queue. Now that I've set up all my attribute and position queues and I've run an auto script, let's see how it looks on the lights. Perfect. That light show looks pretty good and sound switch has got things on point. But what if I want to change some of the settings? Let's say I want to change the color or increase the speed of the effects. Let's take a look. So now I'll load another track and this time I can see that my beat grid is slightly off. As you can see at this section, the ninth bar should align with the start of this section of the audio. So to adjust this, I just want to unlock the beat grid, drag the beat grid along and make sure that it's all aligned correctly. It looks like everything's aligned throughout the rest of the track. So now I can lock my beat grid and I can automate this track. Now it's really important to make sure that your beat grids are accurate. This is because SoundSwitch uses the beat grid to create the light show and split the track up into its phrases. If you don't have the beat grid set accurately, the phrase detection and sound switch can be a little bit off. So make sure you've set these correctly. Now that my beat grid is set correctly, I can select the auto button and this time I'll select advanced. This brings up the automation settings window. Here I have the list of different presets and styles that I can select. In this example, I'm going to select the house and techno preset. If you want to know what the preset or style does, select the information icon and you will be presented with information on all of the different settings that are applied to the lights, the fixture categories and the different sections of the track. You have a number of controls that can allow you to control the bass intensity, pulse intensity, bridge intensity, movement speed, color change speed, and effect speed. You also have a section for choosing custom colors, as well as the ability to choose which position and attribute cues are placed and in what order for what section. One of the best ways to use this settings window is to keep this dialog open and move it to the side, and then apply your settings. You can then make changes to the different settings and see that the changes are applied. Here, if I change the bass intensity, you can see that my lights will no longer go all the way to zero. If I change that back to zero, my lights will pulse from zero to 100%. If I change the pulse intensity to 47%, you can see that the intensity will only go up to that percentage. I can change the bridge intensity the movement speed, which will increase how often the position cues are applied. I can increase the color change speed, which will increase how often the colors change. And the effect speed will control how often or how quickly the chase effects are applied to different fixtures. Here, if I increase the chase effect speed and press apply, these chases are now placed a lot more often. You can also choose custom colors and you can randomize or use all of the position cues that you have set up. You can change and choose the order of how these will be placed for the intro, main one, main two, bridge, middle and outro sections. For example, if I want to go from stage left to stage right during the intro, I simply select stage left as the first position and then stage right as the second position. Sound switch will then change between left and right. I can change the order so that it will go left, right, right, left, or I can randomize it. I can also change to use a change and hold position setting, which will keep my lights in a particular point and then change quickly to the next point. And if I disable this, the positions will change slowly from one to the next. 
I'm pretty happy with that setting, so I'll press apply and I will close the dialog. And now I can see that I have a new light show for this particular track. I can save this and if I would like to play this back, I can do so either here in edit mode or I can switch over to performance mode and play this back. So let's switch over to performance mode select perform and select the venue that I'll be using. So I'm now in performance mode and I have my scripted track loaded on the left deck and I have a non-scripted track running auto loops on the right deck. I'll lift up the fader and press play on my scripted track and then I'll mix over and play the auto loops on the right deck. I can then switch over to the Auto Loops tab and choose to play a different auto loop. So that's perfect. I can play back my scripted tracks and I can also play back auto loops and mix between the two. If I have a number of tracks that are scripted, those light shows will play. And if I play back a track that I haven't pre-scripted, the auto loops feature will have my back. And my lights will always play back regardless of whether I've scripted or not. If you need any help with auto scripting or the auto loops feature, please reach out in the comments below or send an email to support at soundswitch.com. You can also join the user group on Facebook or send us a message on Instagram or Facebook Messenger. Thanks and we'll see you on another video.